Now, there are in this collection around me a whole bunch of cameras which I'm yet to review. This particular camera we're just going to run through quickly now. I've actually had in my collection since I first started. It's one that I take out every now and again because it's a range finder camera. Yeah, I prefer DSLRs. I prefer changing my lenses depending on the situations. But if I'm just going out to a bar, a brewery with friends, it's nice to have a fixed lens option. This particular range finder is known as the poor man's Leica or poor person's Leica. This camera I have seen time and time again at thrift stores. Um, people have them on their shelves because it's a beautiful camera. Without further ado, let's have a look at what I'm talking about. Now, this particular GS was manufactured in Japan in 1970. Think about it. 1970. I'm holding an item in my hand which is over 50 years old and it feels wonderful. It's in great condition. They made things back then to last. These days, I mean, if you just look at the Nikon or Nikon D40X, it was in production for like a year. This thing was in production for over a decade. It is an amazing piece of equipment. This particular one, the GS, is the third in a line of a whole bunch of these rangefinders developed by the Japanese. And it was developed and loved so much because it worked so well. The GS then also had a massive cameo in one of my favorite movies, Spider Man. You guys, if it's good enough for Peter Parker and the Daily Bugle, it's good enough for us, yeah? Parker, hello. You're fired. Why? I have not tried using this camera with flash photography. I just take it out in full sunlight or cloudy using the Sunny 16 rules. Um, but also, because it's a rangefinder, it does a really good job of focusing with those sharp images. Why rangefinder cameras then? Well, rangefinder cameras are historically good at getting really precise focusing in a relatively small package. When you look through the viewfinder, and if you note, the viewfinder is on the left-hand side, a good inch or over an inch away from the actual lens itself. What that means is you see a tiny square in the viewfinder and there's a split image. You see two of the images within your composition or what you're trying to focus on, and you adjust the focus using the focus ring. And when those two images come together and create one image, then that is your focus. Much like when you're out and you've had too much to drink and you're seeing double, and all of a sudden the focus comes together and you're like, yeah, that's where the kebab is, I'm winning. This camera has f-stops from 1.7 all the way up to 16, and it's super easy. Everything is done on the lens itself. Let's have a closer look at the Yashica GS. Boom. The Yashica GS Electro 35. Look at that camera. It is insanely cool. The vibes, the build quality, everything about this camera says 70s, says strong, says beautiful. At the top then, this is our winding handle. And also this is how we open the back door. So just pull it up, back pops open, film loads in through there, and then we can see through to the lens on that side. Battery check button on the back. If you depress that, you see the green line at the top. Green light means go. There's a shoe there, it is not a hot shoe. These lights then, these are gonna tell you if you're exposed correctly, which is super handy. And this is our ASA or ISO dial here. The advanced lever has a count beside it, super easy to advance. And then the shutter release button also has a lock. Suggest you lock that, because this is really quite delicate. On the lens itself then, you see at the back we have our focusing range, which is really smooth. The throw on that is wonderful. Let's have a look at the lens. This little button here is for the self timer. Around about 10 seconds and the self timer will actuate. 
pretty cool. The lens is perfectly clear on this one. Look at that. It's beautiful. It's a 44 millimeter F 1.7 Yashica color lens made in Japan. So you know it's good. All in all, this camera feels wonderful in the hands. It is wonderful and super, super durable. So this camera, when it was first developed, took a strange battery. These days, they take an LR44, and you're also gonna need an adapter to make that work. It's kind of fiddly. The battery situation in this one actually has a bit of aluminum foil in it, but it works. There's a battery test light on the back. Press that battery test light. You see that's green lights up. Boom, the battery's good to go. And this battery is gonna last a hell of a long time. I mean, I rarely use this camera. It's kind of bulky, it's over 700 grams, but I still like using it. It gives me those nostalgic vibes and the pictures from it are kind of cool. This particular one has so many light leaks and so many issues, it is unbelievable. But you guys, if you've been on this journey with me, you know I love light leaks. You know I'm all about the imperfections. Those are the pictures I print out. Those are the ones I keep. I actually heard recently that people were damaging their lenses on purpose, damaging their cameras on purpose, opening the back to let some light in, all that crazy stuff. I don't do any of that. I simply use my camera, and if I get a light leak, I consider it an absolute bonus. So should you buy the Yashica Electro 35 in 2023? That is completely up to you. That is your personal preference. I would say there's such an abundance of this camera on the market. If you wanna shoot 35, grab it. I'm not a huge fan of the way the batteries work, but they do work. I'm not a huge fan of rangefinder cameras myself. I prefer DSLRs, but they're more expensive. If you just want a camera to shove in your bag or to put on a strap and take around, it's cool. If this is just on your shelf in the background like some of my others, it's cool. I wouldn't pay any more than 30 bucks for it. I've seen them as cheap as 10 bucks. This one cost me five bucks. You know, it was a bargain, so I bought it. This particular camera, this Yashica MG1, I didn't even realize was in my collection. It was in the bottom of a camera bag I had, and I think I picked it up for like $2. It's another version of a Yashica rangefinder camera. And if you prefer that kind of black murdered out look, then check this one out as well, the Ricoh 500G. I'm only showing you this because look at the size difference. You guys, that's ridiculous. That's like standing behind an NBA basketball player at a concert. This is so big. This is like 400 grams and this is seven, 800 grams. And they do the same thing. This is a rangefinder camera. This is a rangefinder camera. This camera I picked up for, I think it was like 18 bucks. Uh, this one was five bucks. But which one would I take with me on a daily basis? We're going to see when the pictures come out. But to be honest, I think I would roll with a smaller one just because of the nature of what I do. I don't like big bulky cameras anymore flapping around. So this little Rico, this is probably the one I'd take. So 2023, the Yashica Electro 35 for street photography, for hanging out with your friends, for its cheap nature to get into 35 mil, 100% buy this camera. If you can pick one up for less than 30 bucks, buy this camera. Look out for them much cheaper. There's not much that can go wrong with them. What I have seen is the focusing rings get loose on the front. Um, if this rangefinder glass is broke, avoid it. And when you get it, here's a really good bit of advice. You see on the back, I've got this tape. Just tape the seams up. If you don't like light leaks, tape the seams up with gaff tape and that'll prevent the light leaks, kind of. You guys, thanks for sticking around. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the pictures. The Yashica Electro 35GS. Wonderful camera. See you on the next one.